you found out that you're a projector in human design and now you feel like you've been put in a box, you're confused about all the technical worlds and you wanna understand how you can utilize your beautiful energy to explore your potential. In this video, I'm going to break down the four biggest myths and misconceptions that there are around being a projector in your human design and how we can reframe and actually start looking at them from a positive outlook. Let's get into it. My name is Michael Gabriela. I'm a projector myself and I am a human design leader and the founder of the Transformational Human Design Certification. I have supported hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of burned out, unrecognized, bitter projectors to find alignment and success in their life. And I'm very excited to be able to share these misconceptions so that we can remove any limiting beliefs that are standing in the way for you to shine your light bright. The first misconception is that projectors are lazy or unmotivated. And this is actually also something that can be very triggering for projectors to hear because maybe when they were living energetically authentic, this is what they heard from their peers or their parents or growing up. And this is because projectors are not meant to work in the way generators and most of society works. It's really important to understand that projectors' worth doesn't come from how much they do, but how well they're able to explain what only projectors can see. Because projectors work energetically very different from the rest of society, they're often seen as not efficient, but actually that is completely wrong. Because projectors are only meant to work three to four hours a day, they're actually the most efficient energy type out there. And so just because they're not here to work consistent hours and to work a nine to five and hustle away with the bustle of the city and the intensity of the grind that society and culture has put on us does not make them lazy or unmotivated. It is actually that projectors have a very high sensitivity and understanding when their gifts are recognized, when they're able to actually support other people. And because they don't have that energy that is always available to them, they have this big radar that allows them to only use their energy when it's really recognized. Only when they find the right people and they are recognized and they have alignment within that project, they're able to contribute. It makes no sense for projectors to try to keep up with the hustle of the world because that is not what is energetically correct for them. And so projectors aren't lazy or unmotivated. They just have a different approach on how they're meant to use their energy because they don't have access to that consistent energy that society expects us to have. And this actually brings me to point two. And point two being that projectors don't have energy. This is a huge misconception because the correct terminology is that projectors don't have consistent energy. And this is because projectors have an open sequel center and that sequel center in the human design body graph is a motor. So this means that projectors don't have that innate motor. There's actually three kinds of projectors. You could be a mental projector, which means your crown and your ajna are defined. You can be a pure projector, which means none of your motors are defined, or you could be an energetic projector like I am, for example, in case you haven't noticed. Um, and I have my root center defined, right? Which is a pressure point. And so it feels like I could keep up with the rest of the world because I have this internal pressure that allows me to have more access to some kind of energy than let's say a pure projector. But it is not that you don't have energy. It is that you don't have consistent access to it. And this is really important to understand because it changes your way of interacting with yourself. So for example, there are days where I'm not motivated and I don't have energy and I feel drained and I will rest and it's okay for me to rest. I have my own business. I'm my own boss. I can make my own hours. But today, for example, I'm recording this video on a Sunday and yesterday I spent the whole day recording podcast episodes. So if you haven't listened to the soft power podcast, go check it out. And today is Sunday and I am recording a bunch of YouTube videos. Why? Because, you know, last week, the office was being renovated and whatever, whatever. I didn't have the time to do it or actually I didn't have the space to do it. But the beautiful thing about being a projector is that you can tune into your energy in the way that it feels best for you. That's why having a passive income is really important for projectors because you cannot rely on that 95 hustle to get you through your month. It is important that you're able to tune into your authentic energy to allow yourself to relax and to accept that you're not able to be a productive machine. I think one of the things that's so interesting is that we say we have to generate content. And I think that this is so interesting because it's such a generator thing. The way the algorithm is like, you know, wanting you to produce constant 
content is very unsustainable for a projector because we're not here to generate consistently, right? And so really understanding that because you have an open sacral center and that sacral center is a motor, it's not that you don't have energy. It's just that your energy looks different. It's not like a Duracell body that, you know, you wake up in the morning and then you go, 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 go. So you have a more efficient energy. And this ties in to the limitations that you might feel you could have as a projector. I get a lot of questions like, oh, you know, my friend's a projector and she's a ballet dancer and she trains nine, nine hours a week. How can that be? She's a projector. She doesn't have energy. So again, she has a specific way in which she uses her energy. Nothing of the human design system, no information should ever keep you from exploring and being the version that you want to be. So there are a lot of high successful athletes who are projectors. There are politicians. Obama's a projector. You can have a high stress, high intensity work and still be a projector. The important thing is that you bring your vision into what it means to be a projector. And when I say that a projector works three hours a day, I am obviously working more than three hours a day, but it is only within that specific niche that I have, which are my human design readings. And I will never have more than three human design readings a day. So this is the way that I really utilize my energy for that specific way of seeing things. And for the rest of the things that I have to do in my business, like record YouTubes, podcasts, uh, social media content, team, workshops, all of the other things, I can use all the rest of the time. So really don't let the narrative of you don't have energy be anything that stands in your way. I don't want the human design information, especially for you as a projector, to feel disempowering. Sometimes the projector, if you hear like, oh, I don't have energy and I'm supposed to wait for the vacation, it feels like your life is super passive and you're never going to be able to step it up. But that is not true. One of the most successful people in the world are projectors. Why? Because you're meant to be the new leader of this new time, of this new paradigm. And therefore, your signature, your sign of being in alignment from the human design perspective is having success. So... There is only one path for you, and that is to be successful. But you have to be able to wait for the invitations and work less and do things different. You know how to do things easy. The question is, will you allow yourself for these things to be as easy as you want them to be? Let's cut into point three, which is projectors can't be leaders. And this again comes from this misconception that projectors are weak or that projectors don't have dominant energy. And the beautiful thing is that this is what I was touching upon before. We are in this new paradigm. We're moving into the new era. In 2027, there's a shift of consciousness. Our background frequency changes, and we're moving from a tribal energy where I'm sacrificing my dreams for the good of others to an energy where it is all about expressing my individuality and my consciousness. And so the way that we used to move the masses was with the energy of the manifester. The manifester doesn't have consistent energy, but it has very authoritarian, intense energy. And with its dominance, it was trying to force people to do the things that they wanted. So this is kind of like the Puritan um, way of looking at a business, right? We have the boss up there who's like screaming and yelling and like manipulating people to get them to do what they want. And projectors as the new rise of leaders for the 2027, for the new paradigm, they are not operating from that energy. They're operating from an energy of femininity. They're operating from an energy of guidance. They're operating from a sensibility of seeing that when I focus on you, that will bring all of us the best result. And so as a projector, you're actually meant to be the new people in leadership. You're going to be the CEO, which has always the door open. And when people come in and ask you for advice, you're going to ask them questions and lead them into the right direction. So we're no longer thinking about that forceful energy because that doesn't work anymore. And for you as a projector, being really this new visionary for the times that are coming, you're meant to lead us all into this new paradigm with your guidance, your capacity of seeing things in a different way and doing things more efficient, quicker, faster, cheaper, and more affordable because this is what the projectors come here to do. You are not here to invent things from scratch, but really everything that exists, make it better make it easier so that we can all have a more effortless, you know, joyful, light life. Use the qualities that you have. Understand that your energetic authenticity will be the reference point in the future. We are no longer subscribing to a, the idea of hustling away and slaving away for somebody else's dream. And you are the epitome of what that represents as a projector because innately it is impossible for you to energetically do that. 
And so you're going to become really that focus point. You're going to be that point of reference that by you living out your energy type correctly, by you engaging in your human design strategy and honing on the efficiency that you have and your self-worth and value to the amazing things that you're able to contribute will generate a whole new way of living life and a whole new perspective that is helping us move into 27 and overcome the shift of consciousness with grace. And the last misconception that I want to debunk today is the misconception of having to wait for the invitation for everything, okay? This is also not correct. You do not have to wait for the invitation for everything. You have to wait for the invitation for the specific gifts that you have, for the specific niche where you see things different than other people, because you need to be recognized so that people really understand the value of your wisdom. Only when people really understand the value of your wisdom, that is when you will be recognized. That is when what you have to share will be appreciated. That is when your energy will be invested properly. And so what happens is that you're not built like others. So you're not meant to, you know, just waste away all of the beautiful golden wisdom that you carry with it. But this doesn't mean that you need an invitation for everything. You do not need an invitation to move country. You do not need an invitation to start learning something, studying something. You do not need an invitation to start your own business, create something that you're fascinated about, start diving deep into things. For most things, you're actually able to quote unquote, this is a dangerous territory of moving. You can initiate self love practices. You can, you know, do things that you want to do when they're dealing with yourself. Where you need an invitation is where you're needing to be seen, where what you have to share needs to be recognized. So it is in your specific wisdom, which means work, your gifts, the way that you want to make money. These are things where you have to wait for the invitation. If you are telling everybody what you know, you will come across as desperate and people will take your energy for granted and not value what you have to give. And that will lead to bitterness. And you have to wait for the invitation to date and to move in with somebody. So these are the two things where you need to wait for the invitation. I hope this clears some of the misconceptions up. If you have any more misconceptions, please let them write them down in the comments below. I'm always excited to read what you have in mind. Subscribe, like this channel if you enjoyed this content. Share with anybody who is a struggling protector who needs some myths debunked. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Remember, I don't care what anybody says. I love you.